Hi everyone, my name is Albert. Um, I work in the School of Personal Growth with Google University. Um, today we have the pleasure of having Bruce Manaka. Um, Bruce Manaka, artist and healer, spent 19 years in a monastery living a life of meditation and contemplation. In his sound healing work, he combines the, the ancient vocal techniques of overtone chanting with the beautiful tones of quartz crystal singing bowls to create a dynamic vibrational environment that raises the consciousness of everyone present. He will, be, he will experientially show how sound and its overtones can create profound changes in our lives on all levels. Sound can be a direct path to healing of body, mind, and soul through the vibratory alignment that occurs when it is focused with powerful intent. It can serve as a doorway to explore realms of unlimited creativity, vocal power, and inner wisdom. Through resonance and vibration, the waveforms and harmonics created by the crystal singing bowls helps return us to a state of our natural rhythms and frequencies. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Manaka. Well, thank you. A little bit more about my background. I was a monk for 19 years and uh, transitioned out of that lifestyle in 2001, shortly two months before 9-11 happened. So you can imagine the, uh, the transition at that point. Um, I was pretty much off the radar as far as everything in the world. I, you know, never, I didn't pay taxes for over 20 years. I didn't have any kind of credit history. And so to make the decision to move out of the monastery, which was a very safe place, and to enter a, a world that was quite frightening and scary, it was, uh, it was a major thing for me. Um, the monastery that I lived in was one of East Indian tradition. And I learned about meditation, about controlling energy you know, through meditation. And also, we got a lot into chanting. And I discovered that there's something about chanting where you have the rep repetition of certain sounds. And the type of chanting that I did back then was more of a devotional uh, Indian style. But even back then, I realized that a lot of the power in chanting was in the frequencies, the vocal overtones. And since leaving the, the, the monastery, I, I became involved, uh, I got married, and uh, my wife and I, we do you know, sound healing, magic of harmonics events in the San Francisco areas. And um, the power of vocal harmonics or overtones, I think you know, everyone here, you know, you know the power of sound for, for one thing, the power of music. And uh, there was an American Medical Association research done on the number of hours that, that uh, teenagers listen to music. And it's astounding. It's like from the seventh grade through 12th grade, they listen to over 10,500 hours worth of music. And that includes you know, thrash metal, heavy metal, uh, hip hop. And you know, what's happening, I, I'm interested in that uh, because of this that the, uh, the, some of the beats and the, the low bass sounds, the, the low bass frequencies, it puts the mind very easily into a hypnotic trance state. And the body becomes very relaxed and open. And, uh, and through that, a lot of uh, the messages is, you know, is received through the brain and into the whole system. And a lot of the messages may not be very you know, positive, but music can also be used in a very positive way. And my style of singing, you know, vocal overtones, sometimes called throat singing, it might sound a little bit foreign to Western ears. But, and, and a lot of people already you know, know how to sing you know, uh, vocal overtones. And, but, the, uh, but the thing is, my, the focus that I use is on using sound as a way to access different states of consciousness, different states of awareness. So this is going to be experiential. And for those who are sitting farther back, if you want to feel the full vibration and energy of these uh, singing bowls, you, you may want to 
come up if, if you want to be able to experience that, to get the full experience. So what is it about vocal overtones? For one thing, vocal harmonics are overtones. You know, what is it? Um, I can explain harmonics or overtones by giving an example. Like if you have a piano and you play the low C on the piano, that fundamental sound will, will vibrate the string. But all the other notes that are harmonically tuned to that low C will also start to resonate or vibrate along with that. So what, and what is that? What is the significance of that? Well, for one thing, our bodies are made of 70% water. And as you know, water is a great conductor of sound and electricity and energy. So you, if, you have, uh, if you have something like a singing bowl or a certain frequency, anything around us that produces sound, our bodies will naturally start to resonate or entrain to that, that outside sound. Now, I'll give an example. And this is going to be sort of like a, uh, an, an initial sampling just to get a feeling for this type of, of, of work, this type of sound. So I hope that this comes over the, uh, the PA well enough. So everyone take a deep breath. And then as you exhale, just relax. And feel on the inside. Another deep breath. Exhale and relax. Using the breath and sound, it's almost like instantaneous relaxation. And for the next few moments, as you listen and feel on the inside, <coughs> listen not only with your ears, but listen with your entire body with your bones. Listen with every fiber of your being. Take another deep breath. Exhale and go even deeper.
So you get a sense of how that energy moves in the body. The more you connect with that energy, the more you find that energy, it speaks a kind of a language. And that language may not be a spoken type of language, but it speaks more in a type of metaphor, uh, imagery, colors. Uh, and you'll find that as you connect more and more with that energy, you may find that your dreams become you know, very vivid. And you'll be able to access you know, very subtle thoughts, very subtle feelings. And it's that connection that I'm, that I'm committed to. It's my, my commitment is to creativity and creating sacred space. And creativity is, is a way of accessing that energy that's within every one of us and that is conscious. And when you connect with that energy, it wants to create. And it creates differently for every, <clears throat> every person. And that, that creative energy moves differently and uniquely through every person. It's, it's like every person is a filter or conduit for that type of energy. So my passion is creating sacred space. And that sacred space is that place within each person where they can access their own power, their own creativity. And you'll find that you want to, you want to create. And you, you know, it's almost like you feel driven to create. I do art. I'm, I'm an author of a book. I do music. That's just my particular way of creating. But back in 2000, when I, was still a, when I was still a monk, the role of being a monk sort of superseded a natural connection with my own heart. And it's you know, quite ironic that for someone who lived for 19 years in a monastery would be so out of touch with his heart. And around you know, the year 1999, 2000, um, my body started to fall apart. And I was getting a lot of inner messages that you know, all was not quite right. And you know, I was going through major transition. Um, and so I had to make a decision, stay in, you know, either stay in the monastery where, where it was you know, quite secure or go towards an unknown future. But I, it, it was like the heart, as I was connecting more and more with the heart, the heart was saying, go towards that unknown future. And I really haven't looked back since. And uh, I, want to, I want to read a short passage from, from the book just to give you an idea of the process that I went through. And a lot of, a lot of my book, The Flights of a Runaway Monk, was written uh, during that time of transition. And what I did was, and this is called dominant, non-dominant handwriting. And some of you may be familiar with that. But what I do is I ask questions with my right hand, my dominant side, and I answer with my non-dominant left hand without editing, uh, just writing, 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 and allowing. And for me, that was an, ex an exercise in allowing the linear logical mind to just sort of step aside for a while and allow the, deep, the deeper um, creative side of me to, to show up. And so that, that's what I did. I would ask questions with my right hand, answer with my left. And I found that incredible things started to show up in my life. And, and I got a lot of information. And this is, and as I, as I started to connect with that energy, I found that the awareness starts to see more and more patterns around us. It's almost like, have you ever you know, looked at a tree? And as it's, as it's moving in the wind, you start to see forms. It's sort of like that. But as you connect with that energy, you, you find that more and more, you start to see the patterns that are all around us. 
and that are speaking to us. And that's, it's so subtle that it's easy to miss. It's easy to miss when we connect with other people, when we connect in nature. It's so easy to miss. But as you connect on that deep, inner, subtle level, you start to see the connections there, the, the subtleties. And this, this paragraph sort of reflects that. See deep into the pattern of what seems static around you. All things are alive with vital energy. Learn to use it as fuel for your creative endeavors. Keep the body and mind tuned to this energetic pattern. It is all a play and dance of energy. All sounds have underlying vibrations of indescribable beauty. Learn to see deeply into the fabric of creation. It is a dynamic tapestry woven of the subtlest threads of light and sound, held all together by love. Can you see and feel this? It is all infinite depth of sound and light. Play with it. Allow it, cre allow it expression. Create. Dance. Let it flow through your body and mind in an explosion of beautiful creation. Open your heart. Open your mind to receive this energy. Receive and then release. Surrender yourself to the river. Expand and breathe in the air of creative inspiration. It sustains all things in its embrace of creation. Beauty is all around you. Even in what seems ordinary and mundane, be embraced by beauty. She wishes to hold you in her arms of exquisite rapture. Melt into her embrace. You will learn to see with all your senses. You will see and feel all things are alive. All things are infused with light and love. You will then recognize yourself as a force of nature, connected with the very power that sustains the mighty river and the powerful winds. You will drift with clouds and feel yourself embraced by the most beautiful mystery. So, so for me, making that initial connection with that energy, it seemed like such a difficult thing. I had no idea because I was always up here trying to figure out logically. And it was only when I was able to sort of let that, let that step aside for just a few moments, allow myself to you know, breathe in, exhale, and relax. And it's so simple. With each inhalation, we create sound. With each exhalation, we, we create sound. And that sound, when we watch it and when we feel it, it takes us to deeper and deeper levels. And it's, 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 it really is an experiential thing. I want to play this. This is an amethyst bowl. And it's combined with quartz crystal. It's a very soothing. It's got a lot of overtones and harmonics. And continuing to breathe deeply and naturally. of that energy as it moves. It might be very subtle, but it's in subtlety that we find great power.
a sense of your location of the body in space. feel like I need some, my brain to be recharged, I will tone the E sound and I will in, in, involve the nasal cavities. And, and if you do that, you will start to feel a lot of vibration in this area. And it's, it's an experience. You can start to feel that energy up here and it's, you could find that, you could, you, you see, you could hear that it's being affected by, by the sounds, by the vowel sound of E. It's sort of like this. E. It may not sound pretty to the, to the Western ears, but again, if you use that, that information as a way to explore your own energy, your own consciousness and awareness, you will find that you could use sound to help move energy to any part of the body. And again, if you, if for those who are wanting to develop a, a greater connection with heart, the awe sound is very powerful. And I'll give an example of that. And I'll use the rose quartz. Or, 
or just toning regularly. And if you want, if you want to sing along, go ahead, because it, it is, it's an experience that you want to feel for yourself. And you, you, you will see for yourself that, that certain sounds will vibrate you know, different parts of the body. And what, and what good is that? What, what is the significance? It has great significance, I believe, for healing. And um, there's a, a, an oncologist by the name of Mitch Gaynor from New York. And years ago, he was introduced to Tibetan metal, metal bowls through one of his uh, clients. And uh, he started to use that with his patients. And then he got into some of the singing bowls. And then ultimately, he got into toning. And he said that it revolutionized his practice. It helped his clients to such a degree that he, he came to an understanding that sound is, is such a powerful modality for healing that he, he believes that it should be a part of every healer's you know, medical handbag, so to speak. And there's another medical doctor, Herbert Benson, MD, who found that using certain sounds, and he uses you know, mantrams, uh, certain, certain sounds, and, and a lot of them are uh, you know, vowel sounds. He found that the body and mind go into deep states of relaxation, relaxation very quickly you know, through the use of, of sound in mantrams. And he calls it the relaxation response. So even in Western mod healing modalities, uh, the healers are finding great use for sound. And it's something that we all have our voices it's something that we could do. I oftentimes, I will sing in my car, and it's a great way. I, I've learned a lot of my own techniques. I never, I didn't have to you know, receive training to do the overtoning. It's, it's, you know, for me, it's a matter of learning how to listen on the inside. And if you listen on the inside, and if you can hear the vibration and connect with that vibration, you could usually um, be able to vocalize it. So oftentimes, I will be in my car, and I will be practicing my low, you know, Tibetan low voice singing. And you know, someone might drive up. You know, they ha they'll have their loud music playing, and I'll I'll just sort of play, you know, sing along with that. And they'll look because that because the low frequencies it travels, you know, very far and, and very quickly. So I have a lot of fun with that. This is gold combined with quartz crystal. And this, this particular bowl corresponds to the pineal gland. And it's, it's pretty intense. And for those of you who know about the pineal gland, uh, the pineal gland, it, it's, it produces melatonin for sleep. And it also produces uh, DMT, which um, is considered a hallucinogenic, and it's not legal here. But if you stim when you stimulate the pineal gland, you, can, you will find that you'll see, you, you might be able to see like colors and, and uh, geometric patterns. Uh, so this one is connected with the pineal gland.
as you listen on the inside, getting a sense of the energy as it moves through the body.
continuing to relax. Allow yourselves to re go deeper into that lake. And as you continue to relax and enjoy the state of relaxation, listen to the didgeridoo, ancient Australian Aboriginal instrument. And tradition has it that if you were able to hear the rotation of the earth, it would sound like the didgeridoo.
minds will come back to full waking consciousness. But before we do that, get a sense of how the energy is moving in your body at this point. Getting a sense of body location. We have within our own voice the power to vibrate any part of the body. And, and one thing that people sometimes ask me is, you know, how do you sing in overtones? <clears throat> and I answer this way is that everyone is already singing in overtones. If we didn't have overtones already within our voices, we would all sound the same. We would not be able to know the difference between one voice to another. It's, it's the overtones, the partials that give uniqueness to each voice. But if you, when you, want, if you want to be able to separate the notes so that they're more distinct, you know, that's, where, that's where listening comes in, listening on the inside. When you hear certain sounds you know, in your own singing, like you could sing ah, ah, or e, e. There's a lot of overtones already there, but you, don't, you may not notice the, the separation. But when you listen and then, and then use certain small movements of the tongue and then just getting a sense of that energy, then you could start to focus more energy into those different sounds like and then also using the nasal cavities as, as a way to vibrate and, and produce even more overtones. So it, it's really a matter of deep listening and, and really feeling on the inside. And also being able to support that sound with, with breath. And that's one of the things I'm, I find with a lot of my clients that I work with, there is um, a need for learning how to just breathe naturally and deeply, supporting the breath. Without that breath support, you know, there's really no, not a lot of energy in the body, and there's, no, and there's not a lot of production of the overtones. So when you're able to 
support the, the sound with your breath, you're able to get a lot of volume, and then that also supports the overtone singing. So, and again, if uh, all you need to do is really, I mean, again, my, my commitment is, and my passion is to be able to empower you know, myself and people around me to be able to use that instrument that they already have. And it, it is so powerful that it's just a matter of exploring a little bit into its use. So if, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them at this point. Because I think it's almost that time. So, thank you. Yeah. And if you want to feel, if you, when I play the, these bows, when you're, when you're about six or eight inches from it, you could actually feel the vibration coming from them. So if you want to get that experience, you know, come on up and so, thank you.